Councilwoman Melissa Mark Vigorito is here. Um, she's been active on these issues in the City Council, and she joins us now. Uh, Governor Patterson, I really want to uh, personally thank you so much for asking me to join you here today, and proud to be a witness as you sign this historic and important piece of legislation. Obviously, I want to thank Senator Eric Adams and Assemblyman Hakeem Jeffries for sponsoring this legislation and all those that are here, but in particular, really, again, uh, Governor Patterson for exercising true leadership on such an important issue. I stand here as a New York City resident, first and foremost, but as a council member and also as vice chair of the Black Latino Asian Caucus in the New York City Council. The importance of this victory for our city's African American and Latino communities as well as for civil liberties cannot be stressed enough. Most personally, it's an important victory for districts like mine that are among those that have been the most targeted by the stop and frisk policy, and it's thanks to you that we're able to stand here today and share in this moment. The presumption of innocence until proven guilty is not only a key, uh, if not, is not only a key pillar of our legal system, it forms part of the bedrock of our democracy. And in understanding this basic tenet, there's no justification that can be provided that would have us allow the suspension of this most fundamental civil liberty. Our country, unfortunately, is still reeling and attempting to recover basic civil liberties that were undermined by our prior federal administration as it cloaked itself in the mantle of safety and security. At this most local community level, we cannot allow ourselves to go that road since it becomes a slippery slope that could lead us down to more sinister paths. And as has been indicated, we're all very clear that we believe uh, in this room and beyond that we're concerned about safety and the reduction of crime in our neighborhoods. But actions that seek to achieve this goal cannot come at the expense of some of our most important fundamental rights. A line must be drawn to place sensible limits on law enforcement's powers. The bill, which, the bill which will not be signed into law represents a common sense and fair reform to the city's stop and frisk policies, allowing police to continue these practices, um, but still not being able to store this data, which 90 percent, pretty much close to 90 percent of the individuals are found to be innocent. Um, the public debate that has ensued and has gained strength since the introduction of this bill has also been critical in shedding greater scrutiny on general policing practices in low-income communities of color. Many of us in this room are all too familiar with the realities confronted by our constituents, and I'm not immune to it. Um, and I know people have shared stories, but particularly about two years ago, right in front of my office, um, in my district office on 116th Street and Park Avenue, there was a young man that had been stopped and was being frisked right outside my door. A constituent came and told me what was going on, and I rushed outside to find out what was happening. This young man, African-American, wearing baggy pants, had been singled out by the officers, and he was put up against the wall. When I came upon the scene, I found the officer searching him, but as is often the case, nothing was found on him. I identified myself and made inquiries as to what was happening. Little was said other than they were conducting their business, but soon after my inquiry and my refusal to leave, they seized what they were doing and left. Now, I'm sure the officers, as they jumped back into their unmarked car and rushed off, patted themselves on the back for a job well done. And although that young man thanked me, he hung his head as he turned and walked away, a sense of shame and defeat in his gait. These incidents are all too frequent and undermine the safe streets we strive for in this great city of ours, and these experiences should not be considered a rite of passage for youth in our communities, but all too often they are. The debate that has ensued is just the beginning of a much broader and larger discussion regarding stop and frisk policies in New York City. It is my hope that this will be the start of further oversight by all levels of government on not only stop and frisk, but other police practices that disproportionately target people of color in our city. So once again, I really want to thank you, uh, Governor Patterson, for your leadership. Thank you.